Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over showing you how to scale a mesh based upon a line trace. So this will be based upon the length of the line trace and if this hits something the scale of the mesh will also change. So let me show you what we're going to make today. I'm not going to press play however this does work in game as well. I just thought that the best way to show this off was to just use it on a construction script to update like this so I can move it here but again this does work in game. So if I were to move this mesh actually select the mesh sorry if I were to move the mesh you see that it's not hitting anything this is the full length of the line trace so it's the shape and the size isn't changing however if we were to go to a wall it's going to hit something so the mesh scale is going to decrease so it doesn't go through the wall as you'll see here it's scaling perfectly as to not go through the wall so an example of where you can use this and where I have used this is for the player to be searching so this is essentially the player's eyesight this cone and so they can't look through walls. That's an example of where I've used it, which I do have a video going over doing that as well, if you'd like to see it. And that also shows that this does work in game, so I use this on the player. So again, you can use it wherever you like, but I just thought the best way of showing off was like this. So this is what we're doing today, quite a simple and nice code to just dynamically update the scale of a mesh based upon the length of a line trace. And if it hits something, it's going to dynamically change shape and scale based upon what is hitting so it fits perfectly snug up against the wall or floor or whatever it is which you decide you want to do this for. And again it can be any shape as well it doesn't have to be a cone that's just the example I use because again I've done this from basically using this as a player's vision. But this is what we're going over in Korean today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we obviously want to create our blueprint in which we're going to be doing this in. Now if you already have this blueprint that's great just open it up but I'm going to be creating one from scratch. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm just going to name this one mesh scale BP, as that makes sense for me, but obviously name this whatever makes more sense for you. In the viewport, I'm going to add a component, and I'm going to add a static mesh, obviously being the mesh we want to change shape of, and I'm going to set this to be my cone, which I have created, and which should be this one there. So now this is very specific in the way which you have to have this created because as you'll see the axis point is on the very edge there. So as I scale this it scales perfectly how I want based upon that. If it was in the middle it will scale out both ways and it will not work if you have it like that. So you want to make sure the axis point is on a corner of which you want to scale it from. Now to get this what I did was I just went into Blender, created my own mesh by going Shift A, Cone, and then I just rotated it to be on the correct point of the axis here so this is now the axis point as it is the center of the mesh. You can do that as well or if you've already got it set up perfect but it's very easy to do just put the mesh into Blender and then make sure that the axis point is right there in the middle where you want it to be. I'm going to compile and save that. That's all we need to do in here. We've now got our static mesh where we want and need it. So we're going to go over to the event graph now. I'm going to delete these two nodes as we're not going to need to use them and I'm going to right click and add a custom event. I'm going to name this one scale mesh. You can obviously name this whatever you like but that makes sense for me. And out of this, as I mentioned, we're doing this based on a line trace so we want to actually get that line trace. So we're going to do a line trace by channel like so. And now we want to do this based upon where the mesh is. So I'm going to get a reference to my static mesh here and I'm going to drag out this and we're going to get the world location of our mesh. And this is going to go into the start of the line trace. So we are starting the line trace from where our static mesh is, as that's obviously where we want to start getting the location from. So this is where the beginning will be, and the end just wants to be forward a bit from our mesh. So I'm going to drag out of our static mesh and get the forward vector. And out of the forward vector, we're going to get a vector multiplied by a float. Now this multiplication value here is going to be how long our line trace is going to be. So I want it to be, let's say, 1200 units long. Now you can obviously set this up however you like, that is the one which I used at the beginning of the video, so if you like that, you use this, or again, you might want to change it depending on what mesh you're using, because this is the length of the line trace, which is obviously also going to be the length of our mesh. So this is the scale it will go up to. So make sure you keep that in mind as well, and you can obviously change this value here to change the scale of the mesh later on. Just basically, this is the value you change to get it set up for how you want. And this is going to go into a vector plus a vector, and the reason for this is just to keep it going in a nice straight line forward. So we're going to be adding it to the world location to again make sure this goes in a straight forward line from our mesh. And that's obviously going to connect up into the end of the line trace. 
So that's all we need to do for the line trace. We're getting the world location of our static mesh, plugging that into the start, and we're going 1200 units, whatever you set up, forward in front of the mesh, adding that to our world location, and now it's going into the end of the line trace. So that will now draw our line. So we now want to use the values based upon this line trace to scale our mesh. So that is also quite simple. What I'm going to do is come out to the out hit and break hit result. And we want to use three different values from here. We want to use the location, the trace start, and the trace end. So you might think we just want to use trace start and trace end, as obviously that is then going to be where it began, where it ended, minus them, and then we get the distance. However, this will always stay the same. So if it doesn't hit anything, we want to use the trace end. But if it does hit something, we want to use location, as that location is the point in which it hit. So that's where we want to now dynamically change the scale of our mesh. So how do we determine if it hits something or not? Well, that's what this return value here of the line trace is. This Boolean value is if it did or didn't hit something. So we want to use this value to determine if we use a location or trace end. So to do that, we can drag out our return value and get a select node. So a select is going to choose a different value based upon this value here. It's similar to a branch, however, we just want values instead of execution pins. So what I'm going to do is just drag that in front of it. Now, false of this means we haven't hit something. So if we haven't hit anything, we want to use the trace end. True means we have hit something, so we want to use the location of the thing which we've just hit. And so then when we do this, we're now obviously getting the dynamic endpoint of our line trace. So we want to get the end of our line trace, i.e. the return value of the select, get a vector minus a vector, and we want to minus the trace start. And I'm going to close this to keep it organized. And what we're basically doing here is essentially we are getting the end point of our line trace dynamically based upon if it has or hasn't hit anything minus the start of the line trace to get the total length of our line trace. So I hope that all makes sense. I'm just going to tidy this up a bit just so it looks a lot neater and easier to read. I think that's going to be good for me. Just in case you aren't aware, to get these root nodes you can just double click on the line and it should add them in like so. So now we have the length of our line trace, however it is still a vector. So a nice and easy way to get the length of a vector into a float form is a nice simple node called vector length. So very easy to remember. I'm going to straighten that up as well. So now we have the total length of our line trace dynamically based upon if it has or hasn't hit anything, and we have it in a float form. So how do we now use this value to scale our mesh? Well, as, as I mentioned earlier, this value here is the total length of our line trace. So this is how big we want our mesh to be. That's 1200. If you're using the normal scaling of Unreal, i.e. one Unreal unit is one centimeter, what you should be able to do is 1200 units should just be a scale of 12, i.e. 12 meters. And that's what I want to have it as. So what I'm gonna to do to get that value is return value of a vector length divided by a float, and I'm going to divide it by 100. As obviously 1200, divided by 100 is 12. And that will then give us the perfect scale value. And obviously when this changes, i.e. if it goes down to 1100 or 500, you divide it by 100 and you get the perfect scale value, which you need dynamically changing. So now we can just drag in our static mesh and set the relative scale 3D, making sure it is relative. Connect that into the line trace like this. And we're gonna right click and split the structure pin of the new scale 3D so we can do the X, Y, and Z. Now I'm gonna be doing the X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna be doing all of them. You just plug in the ones which you want to scale. So if you only want to scale the X or the Y or the Z, plug in the ones which you want to do. But again, for me, I want to do the whole thing. We compile, save, and that is it completely done. So that is the code now done for spawning in a line trace, getting the endpoint, whether it has or hasn't hit anything, and scaling our mesh based upon it. So now we just need to figure out how and when we want to call it. So what you can do is at the very end, you can hold down D, left click to get a delay, set in the duration to something small like 0.05, and out of the completed, you can call the function again. So call function scale mesh. That will then work, that will then loop it, and all you need to do is off of event begin play. So hold down P, left click, drag out this, call it once at the very beginning, this is now going to be looping throughout your entire game, so when it moves, or when you move, so it's a player, or an animal, or an AI, whatever it is which you have this set up for, this will always be updating the mesh based upon when it needs to be doing it. So we can compile, save that, and that will now work. What I'm going to do, just to show this off, is I'm going to disconnect this, and I'm going to do it on the construction script. So this is again so I can then move it around 
without having to play it just in the editor just so I can show it off for the purpose of the video. You obviously choose which one you want to do. So this I'm going to just do call function scale mesh and we can compile and save that and like I say this should now be the code working for us. So if we were to drag this in you'll see that nothing is there until I moved it that's just because I've got it onto the construction script so it has to update first in order for it to be there. So let's test this out. So I'm going to hit F11 to go full screen. We can see if I go up to the wall here, it is going to start scaling down as we hit it. So if I go to the other side, you'll notice it isn't going through. This works perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video. As we've done everything we want to do, we've set it up so we can dynamically scale a 3D mesh based upon a line trace length. So if it hits something, it's going to change scale based upon it. As you can see there, it also works for any direction which you'd want which is then perfect, so this works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.